Hey there, do-it-yourself technicians. Do you lose stuff? Your keys, wallet, purse, or maybe it's your favorite drink bottle, or something bigger, like a backpack or a suitcase. I did. In my teens and my 20s, I lost my car keys so often, it was beyond funny. So sometime around 2016 or so, I discovered there were these tracker things that you could buy and attach to stuff in the hope of never losing them again. From memory, the market at the time was dominated, at least in Australia, by tile. But I didn't really like the idea of a non-replaceable battery. So I was able to hunt around and find these devices called a nut tag, and I bought a few of them. Here they are on both my car keys and my work keys. They've mostly lasted the test of time really well, but more about that later. Someone whose computer I was fixing a week or two ago hadn't actually heard of those devices. So I decided to see what was on the market, buy some and test them out. Over the next few weeks, I'll be testing several different devices and giving you a rundown of what I like, what I don't like, and ultimately what I consider the best locator on the market at the moment. Before I get to the actual devices though, there are a few features that I want to explain up front that some or all of the tags use. The first is what I'm calling separation alert. If the device, for example, a tracker on your keys, detects that it's away from your phone that it's paired with, an alert will sound on both the tag and the phone, which is great if I leave one or the other at a coffee shop. I walk away and my phone starts to buzz and beep and I go, oops, uh, keys don't have them let's go back and grab them or vice versa the keys start to chime and I go hang on where's my phone well oh, better go back and grab it again this however is not quite as good when you say leave your keys at the mechanic for your car to be serviced or you lend your work keys to someone to go and unlock a door out of Bluetooth range there are a few inconveniences to it but it is a great feature to have the second is what I'll call reverse find or phone find there's a button that you can press on some of the tags to call your phone and help you locate it. It will make annoying noises for 20 to 30 seconds to hopefully allow you to find your phone or maybe find the right room and then you can press it again to find the actual phone itself. Similar to Apple's Find My feature, but activated with the push of a button on your tag. The third is what I'm calling Network Find. These devices are just Bluetooth, so their range is somewhere in the range of 100 meters. If your tag's further away than that, they can't communicate. The best the software can do is remember when it was last in contact with the tag, and hopefully you can go back there and they'll reconnect and you can find it. This system fails if the thing that has the tag on it is moved after you lose contact. Say you've got your backpack with the tag in it and you lose it in an airport terminal. You can go back to where the app says it was last seen, but it can't be found. Maybe somebody's stolen it, or maybe they've taken it to lost and found. Many of these devices have an option to put out a sort of I'm lost call to the whole network of trackers and apps from that brand. So that if anyone with the app running is in range of your tag, you'll get a notification of the location. As these tags become more and more popular, this will be really quite amazing. And Apple certainly has the lead here with this because it's built into all of the iPhones. Several of the manufacturers we tested tags from make devices in a range of different form factors. For testing, we looked at a fairly standard tag size, a square about 30 to 40 millimeters to a side and about seven or eight millimeters thick. There are other options out there with some of the brands for smaller devices that stick on and even some credit card sized ones that are perfect for fitting into your wallet or purse. How you attach a tag is actually really important. Things like keys live in the school of hard knocks and tags need to be strong and attach well to your keys because you don't want to find your tag to find that it's no longer attached to your keys. There is quite a range of connection types among the tags tested. Some of the tags have what is known as a silent zone. Basically, you won't be notified of alerts within that zone, which once it's set up means that you can cover work in a silent zone and you won't get notified when somebody takes your keys down to the next building to open a door. And as long as they bring it back, everything's fine. But you will be notified if you leave the silent zone without your keys, 
you'll get the ping on your phone as you go. Next week, we're going to start with the Apple AirTag. While I have your attention, I'd love your help. I love making these videos, but to be honest, they're a lot of work. I've paid for each of these tags out of my own pocket. While I do, very occasionally, earn a little bit of income from affiliate links, it in no way comes close to making up for the time and money that I've invested in this channel. There's a link up here and in the comments down below to our support page, where you can find a bunch of ways that you can say thank you and support the channel, and not all of them cost money. I'd love your help. Question of the day, do you lose stuff? Would you look at buying something like this? Let me know in the comments down below. And if this video was helpful to you, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older videos you may not have seen before, here and here. And you can subscribe to our channel by clicking down here, and our mailing list by clicking up here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.